Incomes are rising and our job market is stronger than ever. I have never been as hopeful about Tampa's future as I am today. Now for the purpose of our news conference today. I subscribe to the we can always do better form of governing. Although Tampa's code of ethics is stronger than the state's, these recent violations suggest that we can and should do more to improve transparency and accountability at City Hall. We must never stop working to improve the public trust in city government. And the public should never have even a shadow of a doubt that their public officials are working for the public good and not their own personal benefit. First on public records. We recently rolled out a new portal, GovQA, many of you are aware of that, to modernize and make our system more efficient for responding to the growing number of public records requests. We've also introduced new software to more efficiently capture and retain records on employees' cell phones. As many of you do, many of our city employees have both a personal cell phone and a city cell phone. What matters is not the device. What matters is the appropriate retention and timely response to public records requests. It has always been incumbent upon every city employee to keep and respond to public records regardless of how they're generated. Florida's sunshine laws are fundamental part of governance in the city of Tampa and across our entire state. Every elected official and governing body must adhere to the state's stringent and necessary public records laws. There should be no uncertainty about city employees and elected officials' obligation to maintain and produce records when asked by the public. For those who already know the law and for those who may need a refresher, my administration will require employees to watch and or attend a Sunshine Law refresher class to ensure that no one is ignorant of the law. And just as a point of information, all employees are educated on the Sunshine Laws when they're onboarded with the city. Next, we've asked our City Ethics Commission to review our own ethics standards and requirements for lobbyist disclosures and registrations, review our ethics enforcement processes, and review the conflict of interest disclosure forms required by all elected officials. Now, potential conflicts of interest are inevitable. We all know that. But those conflicts must be clear and transparent. We're in the process of modernizing and streamlining lobbyist registration and reporting of meetings with city officials. I want to stress again that the controversies that have rocked our city council in recent weeks, although they have consumed a great deal of time and energy and taken resources away from our mission, they are not a reflection of our entire council. If you speak to the majority of the council members, they will all agree that we work in concert, in collaboration, to move our city forward. The residents of Tampa deserve the most transparent and ethical government possible so we can get back to doing the business of the people and serving our residents. We have a new city council member as of yesterday just coming on board, and we're looking forward to working with her and we've got a lot to do to keep moving our city forward. So I will open it up to questions. City council members, all elected officials are required to do four hours on sunshine laws and, and uh, ethics laws every year. I have no idea what he's talking about. The, the records that I have seen are very, very clear. 18 out of 19 
um, allegations were substantiated and there were, I believe, just under 20 witnesses that corroborated the statements that he made. It was never closed. It was never closed. As a matter of fact, the headline in the Tampa Times was untrue. What happened is the legislative aide approached our HR and indicated that there were issues with her supervisor. At that particular time, she was provided um, avenues for addressing that. One was that our HR could have a conversation with that supervisor, or if she felt she could handle it, and if it didn't improve, she could return. So uh, having been in law enforcement for 31 years and now in this position for three years, one thing I do know is that in these types of instances, in harassment, in stalking, in sexual assaults, that you have to give the authority to the victim. Let them be in control of the situation. This particular victim wanted to keep her job and she felt that she could handle the situation on her own. When she returned to HR, she revealed in detail what had happened and detail she hadn't shared before and indicated that not only had the situation not improved, that it had deteriorated to the point that she could not work under those conditions any longer. Mm-hmm. No, what the city, the reason that they called, there was uh, talk at in the council chambers about the reason that she had taken the uh, leave of absence. And so HR was calling to check on her welfare. But she's the one that indicated that the situation was untenable and that something had to be done. That you've you've conflated the issues there, Charlie. The first time she approached uh, HR was when she said she felt that she could handle the situation herself. She wanted, she needed that job and she wanted to stay there and she felt that she could improve it. When she took the leave of absence is when they called to check on her welfare. And that's exactly what happened. Because there was no investigation when she came and disclosed very briefly, very few details of the environment in which she was functioning, she was provided with the approaches and she chose to take care of it on her, on her own. So it was n neither opened nor closed. So your headline was inaccurate. So what, what is your, but what is your, to check on her, to ensure on her well-being, but I don't understand what your, your point is there. Are you trying to, to take the light off of the actions? Again, there was information that she had taken a leave of absence because of the environment in which she was working. So it's incumbent upon us to ensure that our team member, members are safe and sound. There was no, I think the point you're trying to get here, there was no, um, there, was, there were no actions on the part of the city. We, in essence, were just 
calling her to let her be in control of the situation. She's the one that indicated that the environment was hostile and untenable and that actions needed to be taken. No, no. She, again, it's not the device, it's the, the proper and timely response to public records requests, which she did. The files on her particular phone were, my understanding, were the photographs that were provided from another device. I, I stated before about, and those those are completely different um, issues right there. She responded to the public records request. The As I said before, it doesn't matter if it's a city or personal device, you're still responsible for responding to public records. If it deals with city business, it's a public record. She responded to those requests in a timely fashion. Clearly, it would be best if everyone used their city phone at all times, but the, the important aspect of that is that you respond to the request in a timely manner, which she did. Right, we have a uh, software that, as I stated in my remarks, we have a software that has been put in place that automatically retains all of uh, the public records now by cell phones. We had that in place for email, but we have implemented that uh, in cell phones in light of uh, Councilman Dingfelder's actions. Um, I would say maybe two months ago, but I couldn't tell you specifically. I can get that from our IT. It's outlined, it's a handwritten note that says that it was not sexual harassment, but not good for a public official. My question is, as it relates to the conclusion, Trenum Law and then Mr. Tom Gonzalez, why was he brought in to give a different, perhaps, conclusion than may, what may have been provided by Trenum Law? Uh, he didn't. He, we sent, because, you know, this was an unusual situation for our city as a whole. With 4,600 employees, we rarely have these types of complaints. And we clearly, it's incumbent upon us to ensure that everyone has a professional, ethical working environment. Now, this involved an elected official, so that makes it a different situation. We ensured that it was an independent and objective investigation, so we sent it to Trenum Law that not only are subject matter experts in this particular area, but the, it was a very diverse team that did the, the investigation. They completed that fact-finding investigation, sent that back to the city, and then we, uh, in turn, took that to Tom Gonzalez, who is our labor attorney and has been for some time, and then he made the conclusion that per state statute, the actions of Councilman Goods um, rose to the level of sexual uh, harassment. That's an, that is something that we are considering. We in no way, shape, or form pressured or coerced anyone in either of these instances here. And frankly, uh, some in the media have re-victimized. This, this is one of the reasons that victims don't come forward. I can tell you in my experience as a law enforcement officer, I spent years investigating sexual assaults. And I can tell you right now, if I was a victim of sexual assault, 
I probably would not come forward because this is what happens. She had, she had the courage to stand up and now she is being re-victimized once again. She did not ask the city not to investigate. She said that she wanted to ensure that she kept her job and she felt as if she could have a conversation with her supervisor and she would be able to handle it. Several months later, she indicated the entire story and said that not only had the situation not improved, it had gotten worse and in fact she could not work in that environment any longer. Probably the fact that she again was being victimized. As you know, Charlie, you called her the day the report was released and asked her specific questions that were in that report, which was confidential. Okay. Charlie, our, our city attorney's office has answered that for you very specifically in an email that is a public record. It's, it's been answered. Last question from Josh. ...not being notified about the original complaint going dormant, I guess, so to speak. The city's attorney said that was outrageous. He should have been notified. Right. This, and, and this is, this is a, a common occurrence as well. When individuals are found to be acting inappropriately or illegally, uh, quite often they use the approach of deflection. Let's take the light off of me and put it on something else. Putting it on the process or putting on, like if there was no requirement to notify Orlando Goods because she wanted to take care of it herself. There was no obligation to notify him, but even if notification was made, does that somehow lessen the hostile environment that he created and the unbelievable statements that he made that close to 20 people were witnesses to? Thanks, everybody. Thank you, I appreciate it.